Hello, I'm Gardener Ben and welcome back to the North Lodge Cottage Garden. As you can see, I have a selection of utterly fabulous David Austin roses in front of me. And whether you're joining me on Instagram, Facebook or on YouTube, this is now my mo most requested video. So many of you want your roses to work really hard in the garden. And whether you're gardening in a small space on a patio or balcony, or whether like me you have a really large garden but just want everything to look good for as long as possible. There are 12 roses, all from David Austin here, that are really going to pack some serious punch and that I have deemed to be best for flowering and best for repeat flowering. Please remember, every single one of these roses has its own personal rose review from myself. So please, if there's a rose that captivates your attention, do go through the media and find the uh, particular video that you're looking for. And if you have any problems, don't hesitate to drop me a message or drop me a comment and I will direct you to the video that you're looking for. So let's crack in straight into it. 12 roses that I have deemed from David Austin Roses to be the best for flowering and best for repeat flowering. There are some absolute crackers in here that are also going to appear time and time again in some of my other best of selections. So please do look out for those videos as well. A large climbing rose for you first of all. Well it's not particularly large actually but producing huge sprays of flowers. This beautiful rose is Blush Noisette. Now I've reviewed this one during National Rose Month 2022 so this is a relatively new one. This is a beautiful uh, rambling rose producing these wonderful sprays of light apple blossom pink flowers all the way through the summer virtually thornless this is a fabulous small climbing rose which only reaches around 10 feet so very very handleable for most people's gardens so the first one up in the best for flowering and best for peak flowering is blush noisette this is an old rose and not necessarily a david austin rose from the late 18th century no surprise with this one at all uh, this one is astasia vi never ever out of flower here in the north lodge cottage garden this is an absolutely stunning rose which produces large sprays of flowers literally continuously all the way through the season so whether you're growing it in a pot or whether you're going to plant this on mass in a border astasia vi is an absolutely fabulous rose that you really shouldn't be without one that you're always asking me about and which is particularly good but has a couple of characteristics I struggle with. This is Olivia Rose Austin, a very very beautiful soft pale pink rose which for me is just a little bit on the droopy side which is why it doesn't make it up into the top 20 David Austin roses but Olivia Rose Austin will flower and flower and flower all the way through the season often one of the first roses in bloom in the garden uh, probably normally the third one in bloom actually the other two that are normally first are actually in the vase still in front of me but olivia rose austin is a really good hard working rose especially if you plan to grow it in a pot uh, so if you're growing on a, te a, te a terrace or a balcony this is an absolute cracking one for growing in a pot it's going to work really really hard no surprises with this one at all that you're going to find this one in this particular selection. This one is the Country Parson from David Austin Roses. A beautiful soft yellow rose with, as you know, a beautiful fragrance. This one is never going to be out of flower, much like its uh, sister rose, Harlow Carr. But this one, I believe, flowers a lot more heavily than Harlow Carr, which is why it makes it into this selection for best repeat and best for flowering. A really large rose up for you next, which I absolutely adore. This one, oh, she's falling apart. This one is Royal Jubilee. A really deeply, heavily goblet or chalice shaped flower uh, from David Austin Rose is producing lovely, big, long arching stems. Royal Jubilee will never be out of bloom and it is absolutely fabulous, making sure that it is firmly in this collection for best for flowering. The fragrance on this one is also very interesting as well, so one to look out for. A really large rose up for you next, which is fabulous if you have the space. This one is the stunning Lark Ascending. Semi-apricot blooms are born on huge, long arching stems, 
literally all the way through the summer. You can see the lovely dark orange buds and the beautiful open apricot flowers, which are fabulous for pollinators. This particular uh, rose really comes into its own right at the back end of the season, when it really finds it its stride and starts sending up huge, long arching leaders up to the sky where it catches the late summer evening sun really, really well. And this freight, the, the, the color of this one literally radiates out from the actual flowers themselves. Don't forget, this one also appears on my best that growing rose hips as well. So please don't deadhead this one right at the back end of the season. So September and October, start leaving the, the flowers to fade on this one and you'll be rewarded with some lovely hips all the way through the winter. So this is the Lark Ascending. No surprise that she's here whatsoever. This is the beautiful Princess Anne from David Austin Roses. A small, compact, well-behaved, well-mannered rose, which is never, ever out of flower. Dark pink magenta blooms are produced all the way through the season. This rose is often number one, number two, or sometimes number three in flower in the garden, and is often still in flower right at the back end of November and into a very, very early December. An absolutely stunning rose, which I adore. So this one is Princess Anne. And not a particularly blue, good bloom from our top ranking rose number one. It's having a little bit of a break at the moment. Please remember these roses cannot flower continuously all the way through the summer. They do have to have a little bit of a break just to catch their, uh, their breath, have a little bit of a feed, get some water and some moisture into themselves before they go again. Making the best for flowering range, this one is Silas Mana, which is my new number one David Austin rose. Another climber up for you next, which I believe is really, really good for flowering. This one here is Malvern Hills. I have been so impressed with this rose. Uh, only in the ground 15 to 18 months with myself and producing absolutely vast, huge sprays of, flower, of flowers. Now this one is actually planted on an east side of a fence, just outside the kitchen window. And this is sending up huge sprays of flowers over the west side of that eight foot high fence, which can be seen from the road. It really is absolutely outstanding. So this one is Malvern Hills. No surprise that this fabulous rose makes it onto the list either. This beauty is tranquility. My top rated white rose from David Austin that is never ever out of flower. Producing flowers all the way through the season right into the very, very back end. You'll find this in bloom along with Claire Austin and Princess Anne right at the very end of the season into October and November, where you will sometimes get one or two spots to the back of the flowers as the temperatures change the colour pigments ever so slightly. But this one is Tranquility. Two more roses hiding in here, the first of which is hiding right down the front. A new review from myself during 2022. This lovely one is Kew Gardens and has not been out of flower all the way through 2021 and all so far through 2022. Now I had a, a, a comment about this one a day or two ago saying, well, whether it was in flower all year. And well, of course that's not true. I'm talking about the actual growing season where the rose is actually likely to flower. But this one was one of the first in flower in very, very late May and has produced thousands of blooms ever since it started flowering. And I'm expecting this to continue to flower at this rate all the way through to the very, very back end of the summer. So this beauty is Kew Gardens. Last, but of course, no means least, the beautiful and stunning Sceptred Isle from David Austin Roses. A fabulous one for scent and colour and form. Really, really hard working rose, which you're really going to enjoy in the garden. So that brings us to the end of this particular collection. These are 12 roses, all from David Austin, which I deem to be the best for repeat flowering here in the garden. Should you have any queries or comments, please do feel free to leave me a like me a comment. Make sure that you like, follow and share. And if you want to watch this video another time, make sure you save it for later. Don't forget, all of the beautiful roses in front of me have got their own individual rose reviews. So if there's a rose that's particularly captured your attention or you need some more information, please do feel free to find that video and give it a watch. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you all again soon.